and welcome to the Movie Mouth Film and TV Podcast, an inconsistently released podcast designed to help you figure out what's worth a watch in your cinema or multiple video stream service of choice. This episode is all about reunions as we reunite after 36 years with Tom Cruise, where we feel the need, the need for speed, and strap in to experience 10 Gs of pure adrenaline in... Top Gun Maverick. We then go back to the 80s for a return to Hawkins, Indiana, as we catch up with the Hellfire Club three years after the last season in Netflix's Stranger Things season four. And speaking of reunions, hello there. Yes, Ewan McGregor is back after 17 years as the Jedi Master who always has the high ground. It's Disney Plus's new Star Wars show, Obi Wan Kenobi. That's a name I've not heard in a long time a long time and in this week's video store corner classic film discussion section we decide to strip down to our sweaty bare naked chests slap each other senseless and hug our aching muscles while listening to kenny Loggins' totally macho and manly song playing with the boys while banging a small white ball over a net on the beach and calling it just good old man fun yes it's tony scott's original top gun do 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 On top of it all, we'll be discussing the latest film news, trailer reactions, and throwing in as much Movie Mouth madness as you've come to expect from the Movie Mouth team. This is Miles. Pause for breath, taking a breath, and as ever, I am joined by a man who once said, In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little, yet enjoy a position over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read. But the bitter truth we critics must face is, in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designated it so. But there are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery and defense of the new. The world is often unkind to new talent, new creations, the new, f- the new needs, friends. Last night, I experienced something new, an extraordinary podcast from a singularly unexpected source. To say that both the podcast and its makers have challenged my preconceptions about fine movies is a gross understatement. They have rocked me to my core. In the past, I have made no secret of my disdain for the Movie Mouth podcast's famous motto, anyone can pod. But... I realize only now do I truly understand what they mean. Not everyone can become a great podcaster, but a great podcaster can come from anywhere. It is difficult to imagine more humble origins than those of the genius now podding at Movie Mouth, who is, in my critic's opinion, nothing less than the finest podcasters on Spotify and all of the other podcast-related apps. I will be returning to Movie Mouth Podcast soon, hungry for more. It's Phil. Hi, Phil. Mm, hello. <laughs> Hi. Can you, can you guess that? If you can guess, I said before we came on air, if you can guess that movie, I will give you undying respect. If you want a clue, I can give you a clue. But if you want to just go for it, just go for it. I really don't know. Okay, it was really, I'll give you a clue. It was right. really a restaurant review, not a podcast review. Oh. Oh. Um, what the hell is a film reviewing restaurants? Oh, rats. Come on, Phil. <laughs> Stop being a big, hairy, stinky rat, Phil, and get the answer to this. <laughs> You really are. Oh, if you were a, a, a stinky rat in Paris sitting on someone's hat, under someone's hat and making them oh, cook, you really ratatouille. would be. Oh, ratatouille. God <laughs> damn it. Yeah, wow. Not Call yourself a while. man or a mouse? <laughs> oh, great film, though. I love that film. Great film. I saw that at the cinema. I loved what it. a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry I didn't get that. That was good. I no, I mean, it. it's fine. It was a good one, though, right? Yeah, it's very good. I do appreciate all the effort you put into your intros. Oh, mate, it's ridiculous. I mean, usually it's just Michael Caine or Al Pacino, but in this case, yeah. you know, I really went, pushed my boundaries and went for a yeah. Pixar film. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, darling? What's What's been going on in your world? Oh, not, you know, not too much, really. Your big um, sweaty man world. 
<laughs> Not too much. No. Same as always, you know me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chicken along. This, I mean, this week was all about Maverick, wasn't it, Phil? It was. Um, and yet I've still not seen it yet. Well, only okay, don't worry about that. But I've got a question for you. In, in terms on. of this podcast, the Movie Mouth podcast, thanks for listening, all you listeners out there. <laughs> yeah. um, do you think you are Top Gun or Bottom Gun? <laughs> bottom Gun? <laughs> Let me rephrase it anyway, if you're a little confused by that, because I'm sure you are confused. Do you think you're in the cockpit or in the back seat? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Phil. You can be you can be my wingman anytime. No, Miles. You can be mine. Oh, direct quote from the movie. Very good, sir. Very good. All right. Well, let's <laughs> let's move on from that. Uh what have you okay. been watching these past few weeks? Uh do you know what? I, uh, one the main thing that I've been enjoying immensely is um I'm up to date fully on season six of Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. Which I know is the final season, which I'm very sad about because I've enjoyed that show a lot. Um, but did it get did did it get better? It's just it's consistently good. There's like not one season for me that's been mm-hmm. bad of that whole show. So I that's love it. consistently I cool. Saul would be a better a better name. Consistently cool. Saul, awesome. Um, and yeah, I don't know how many episodes are left. I think there's maybe about three left. I think there's right. always been about 10 episodes a season. And mm-hmm. I think I've just watched seven. Um, so the new one will be out on Tuesday on Netflix. Um, question, question for you about Better Call Saul. So yeah. reservation that I usually get uh, for shows or movies about characters that you already know their fate. You know, if it's the main character of a show, for example, that's yeah, you know now in a prequel series or a prequel movie or whatever. You know their fate. D- does it have surprises? Does it have twists and turns like, you, you know, Breaking Bad did, obviously from the same makers, Vince Gilligan? I, yeah, it does because it. Um, I think for the entire show, you're like, well, how does he get to where he is in Breaking Bad? And mm-hmm. because he's playing quite a different character up until maybe like this season, like because the early seasons he's more you know, trying to prove himself as a lawyer, even mm-hmm. though he's, you know, his like lawyer his his law degrees from, you know, like some rubbish college where he's working in his brother's um big a law firm that's really successful and his brother's a really revered lawyer. Right. Yet he's like looked down upon as a bit of a scrot and sort of, you know, his law degrees from some back alley type law firm mm-hmm. and he just scraped through it. And so he's, yeah, it, it's just really good development. It doesn't take anything away from it for me. He's just, um, I think it's just a brilliant series. Because, I mean, you know, really he's, you know he's going to survive. You know he's going to survive because he's in Breaking Bad. But yeah. is there still that that suspense, that drop? Do you know what I mean? Or does it kind yeah, of take away 100%. from it? I, I sometimes find that when I watch shows, and we'll come on to one like that later, where you know the outcome of the fate of certain characters and mm. you're still having to sit there in suspense but it's like well this is great it looks good blah 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 blah. but i know what's gonna happen yeah but i think it's about more about i don't know how it's you know i don't know yeah i know what you mean okay you but know i, think, I was yeah, furious it's still very I was, interesting i was i was furious because you, you've you love this show you've been recommending this show to me for a long time and i will sit down I and have. watch it i, I want to watch should. it when it's when it's all complete so i think i'm going to start watching it soon but I was yep. furious the other day. I came downstairs and my girlfriend had started episode one of Better Call Saul without me. Oh. So, uh, should be illegal. And she knew straight away. It was, she, was, she said, oh, you've seen it, haven't you? I thought you... She's I made like, a mistake. No. I was like, you've made... All right, listen, all right, you might love me and care for me and you know, do everything that a, a loving person would do for somebody else, but you do not start a show without me. You do not do that. <laughs> And um, my therapist said that yeah. that was irrational, but I, no. I feel like, you know, the that's a gross mis- misuse of trust. Yeah, that is a mistrust. Yeah, that she's, is, out uh, the, she's out. She's out of the trust bubble. She should get one uh, strike against her name for such a strike me down. <laughs> I will. I will. 
we'll get a strike. Not a strike, not a physical that. strike. We don't no, have no, any no. of that. No, a top a, gun airstrike. A you top know, gun we'll airstrike, yeah. <laughs> but no, I was definitely <laughs> bottom <laughs> gun in that argument. So um You were not in we the go. cockpit. <laughs> definitely not in the cockpit for a week after that. Um no. so <laughs> moving on. Um I, I I got a question for you. Yeah. Did you think the moon night was a total eclipse of the moon or did you think it was just a crescent finale? How oh yeah, know? I finished moon night as well. I did. What, um, do you, what do you think about the finale without any spoilers it was, for those it, people? It rushed. If I'm going right. to review it in one word, rushed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, this happened and then this happened and everything's good. There's a credits. Goodbye. I also feel like that, that series, although I enjoyed it, I don't really want to see it anymore. I'm not bothered. Yeah, I mean they they marketed it, marketed it as a limited series. Yes, but it definitely and you know again no spoilers, but there's definitely a cliffhanger ending in there to some extent, which mm-hmm. you know um, we'll see. But yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I've really enjoyed it. I think episodes four and five were just phenomenal. It got well, yeah, it did get a lot better as it, it went got on. better. The CGI got better. I think in our review, we were talking about how it looked like a PlayStation yeah. 1 get video game. Um, but yeah. it definitely got better, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, loads better. Yeah. Um, yeah it's a really good moment. I, I, did, I did really enjoy it. And I thought um, Oscar Isaac was like brilliant in it as well. Hmm. Um, I thought he was really good. But, Mark, uh, Mark, it's me. I, 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 I talk like this, Mark. I, I'm, go, I'm going to Egypt, Mark. I'm holding a gun, Mark. What's going on, Mark? I don't quite know, Mark. Yeah, that's exactly what he's, he's like. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, oh, I went a little bit uh, bungle there. No, I went a little bit zippy from oh, Rainbow. Mark. Oh, George! <laughs> George, yeah, uh, yeah, George uh, one skin, two skin, three skin. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's yeah. move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. We got more. We got. I've got more Disney Marvel to talk about. Um, we didn't do a review for this, but um, unfortunately, we didn't have time to turn a podcast around. We had a, we had a lot going on in our actual lives. Um, mm-hmm. But I did manage to go see Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, or Doctor Strange mm-hmm. Mom, as social media has decided to call it. Doctor Strange wow. Mom. Um, but I will say a few <laughs> words on it. Directed by Sam Raimi. Obviously, we know Sam Raimi directed the Evil Dead Legend. series, directed the best Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man 2, and obviously 1 and 3. Um, and yep. he's a legend. Uh, it was good. I didn't love it. I think it's like B-level Marvel. It's not the A-level, you know, Sp- Spider- last Spider-Man movie, No Way Home or Endgame or Infinity War. It's definitely B-level towards maybe the C-level. Um Kind of reminded me, this is weird, people aren't going to agree with this, but it kind of reminded me of Thor The Dark World a little bit in that I think it was fairly void of humor and it featured a lot of like universe jumping. Obviously, it's a multi- multiverse movie. Um, and I think there was a, I don't think there was much of a multiverse of madness really in there. There was some weird stuff, but it wasn't anything really that you haven't already seen before or thought about before. There was right. some wicked cameos. There was a wicked like um, moment, which again, I won't spoil, with some heroes that were awesome. Um, there was uh, also a really good turn, I think, from uh, from um, with Scarlet Witch, who I thought was was absolutely awesome. That was really, it was really like a sequel to One Division. For those of you that have seen One Division, Phil, I don't think you've seen that yet. I've not. Yeah. No. So it was it was kind of a follow on to One Division. So if you do sit down to watch this movie, I I think. More importantly than just watching Doctor Strange, the first Doctor Strange, I would sit down and watch WandaVision as well because, you know, Scarlet Witch has a, has a major role in this. And of course, mm. it's a Sam Raimi movie. So Ash himself, Bruce Campbell, of course, cameos as he does in all of his movies. And in this Brilliant. movie, the cameo is just amazing. Scene stealing, hilarious. So um, didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to, uh, but it is a Sam Raimi movie in pretty much every way. And there was a really cool Sam Raimi thing in there that I can't really talk about, but it features like prosthetics and Benedict Cumberbatch. And it's a little bit Dark Man. For those of you that have seen Dark Man or listened to our awesome um, Video Store Corner special on Dark Man, which was just a classic. Um, yeah. So yeah, worth, worth, worth a watch. Um, didn't love it, but there you go. Um, on the TV front, I'll, I'll close off quickly, uh, but I did finish Tokyo Vice, which is the new Michael Mann HBO Max show starring Ansel Elgort, 
as a reporter mm-hmm. who goes to 1990s Tokyo to uh, report on the um, Yakuza. And it's a true story based on a memoir. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, a lot of it is in Japanese, um, just wicked Japanese settings. And, you know, for people that love, I'm sure people that listen to this podcast love, you know, anime, manga, and and movies based in Japan, then this will really, you know, satiate your your thirst for, for those kind of things. Um, and find it really interesting to see the cultural aspects as well around, a, you know, a foreigner in, in working in, in 1990s Tokyo. Um, that was, that was really good. Um, and then thanks to Sean Chrysanthu, our regular contributor to the podcast, um, I freaked out because I saw that Star Trek Strange New Worlds, uh, the new show dropped on Paramount Plus over here in the US uh, last week. I think it's dropping this week or sometime this week in, uh, in the UK. Um, and that's the new Star Trek show, which features huh? the, the, uh, obviously the cast of the Enterprise and uh, Christopher Pike. And it looks awesome. Um, so they are actually featured in a series of Star Trek Discovery. And so my concern was, do I now have to go back and watch all of Star Trek Discovery, which I kind of started and I didn't really finish because I hated it. Uh, so yeah, I had to do that. I spoke to Sean. He gave me some advice. I watched, I'm up to the point where they've now been introduced in Star Trek Discovery in season two. And I'm hoping to then pick up with Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which those Trekker fans out there will want to get a hold of soon. I'm sure. I think that's dropping, Mm. like I said, this week in the UK. Um, and I think we're on about episode two, uh, three or four over here in the, in the US. Right. That. Um, you're a Star Trek fan, Phil? Not particularly. No, I've never got into the... I watched the films growing up uh, and some of the original series when it was on TV. But I would never really got into Next Generation or uh, Deep Space Nine or whatever it was, uh-huh. and any of those. Um, I just never really followed it. It's not because I probably wouldn't enjoy it. I probably would. But I've never really uh, felt the the desire to go through all of them and uh, watch them. I know what you mean. I'm, I'm definitely not a Star Trek fan. One second, sorry. Replicator, Earl Grey hot. Um, so let's move on. Uh, I would say oh, away from TV and movies, I also did something really cool, which I know you know about Phil, but, um, there's an experience going on in London, LA and New York right now, which is hosted by Netflix. It's called Stranger Things the Experience. And mm. it's a 40, 45 minute, uh, walk through a Hawkins lab. Basically, for those of you excited about the latest season of Stranger Things and soon to be the final season of Stranger Things. Um, and this is, if, for those of you who've done secret cinema, it's kind of like an interactive uh, experience where you're, you know, fo- you're following actors walking through a set, series of sets. Um, mm-hmm. I won't say too much about what it, the actual content of it, but I will say some of the most inventive use of 3D that I've ever seen and some of the more inventive use of actors, 3D screens and pyrotechnics and, and everything else going on it was really cool. Um, if That's you've cool. done, if you've done like the Terminator 3d experience at Paramount, um, at universal studios, um, or any of the transformer 3d stuff, which I think has surpassed that you'll kind of know what I'm talking about, but it was, it was really good and worth the price of admission. And at the end of it, again, without spoiling it, because this is stuff that we posted on our movie mouth podcast, Instagram channel. Um, there's also, it also opens up into a kind of 1980s shopping mall where you get to like hang out, you get to go to Scoops Ahoy, the um, ice cream place, ice cream parlor where Steve and Robin work in season three uh, mm. in Starcourt Mall. There's a roller rink. There's um, an, an arcade with like vintage 80s arcades to play. It's playing nothing but like 80s music. There's a bar in there where you can buy Stranger Things themed cocktails and drinks. And yep. best of all, there is a video store in there, which is literally in a corner. So it is a video store corner. And uh, I went in there and I had a conversation with the clerk, who's obviously an actor, and talking to him about mm-hmm. movies. And there's all these videos of that era in there. And he's kind of talking to you about recommendations. And uh, he was talking to someone about Indiana Jones. And he said, oh, you know, he, the guy was like, have you got, you know, Raiders or have you got Temple? And he was like, oh, no, we've got Raiders and Temple. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I was like, what about Crystal Skull? And he was like, Crystal Skull? He's like, no. <laughs> he's a little never test, heard, never heard, never heard. test of that. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And he was like, I was like, are you sure? I, like, I heard there's a Christmas. No, no, I've never heard of it. So it was just a really, as a nerd, you know, a film nerd, an yeah. 80s nerd, and a fan of all those things. We spent probably more time in that experience, just lapping that up and doing all the little things and looking at all the merchandise. Yeah. 
Um, so Stranger Things experience, go check it out. This is in no way a sponsorship by Netflix, but if you love Stranger Things or you, or you just love the 80s, go check that out in New York, London, and LA right now. <laughs> All right. Right now. <sighs> Should we <laughs> should we move into the news? Let's do it. There's only one place to start. That's my news theme. Did you like it? It's a bit jolly, actually, wasn't it? It's a bit too um, jolly, especially yeah. for the news that we're about to break. I mean, I'll just get us... I mean, if you want to get us started off, Phil. Uh, I've got one little bit of news. Go and. On. I suppose it is a jolly piece of news, and that is the, the uh, Taika Waititi Star Wars movie, um, which has been uh, talked about before. Is <clears throat> it's been produced? Um, it's been said by Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy that it's going to be released. Um, it's in 2023, but it's going to be released uh, before uh, Rogue Squadron, which is going to be the next big release. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I think he's going to do a great job. Um, not really, no. It's a bit under wraps at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's all it's because um, there's been a lot of stuff going on at the Star Wars Celebration 2020, so they've released a lot of stuff, including a couple of trailers and bits and pieces, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about in a bit. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, there's not much detail about it, but... You know, he's he's got a link with Star Wars anyway. He did the uh, episode eight, I think, of the Mandalorian. Mando. Uh, he direct he directed that, um, and I think he's a real good talent anyway. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm quite excited. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I think but yeah. So yeah, it will be interesting. I think he he kind of veers toward comedy in a lot of things. I think Star Trek is, you know, and we saw we saw this happen with uh, the solo Star Wars story where they had to very obvious comedic directors that they brought in to mm. direct it, which they then, you know, squarely pulled off of it, like, you know, half the way through shooting. Um, you know, those are the guys that made the uh, Lego movie. <clears throat> and, you know, I do worry a little bit about a comedic voice coming in. I think that, that Taika Waititi, I think he does have a serious undertone in them. I mean, those of you that saw Jojo Rabbit, the end of Jojo Rabbit is pretty, you know, pretty serious. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. The new trailer for Thor, the, Thor, um, Love and Thunder, which is directed by Taika Waititi as well, veers more towards the dramatic tone, where we saw yeah. a more comedic tone in the previous trailer. So it, it'd be interesting to see like what he can do with it. But again, we know nothing about it and what the content is. So you know, open to be open to be surprised surprised by that. Yeah, um, it's just so much Star Wars, isn't it? It's just a lot of Star it's Wars. It's like they've turned into Marvel, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I feel like. They with solo and you know uh, and Rogue One. I think Rogue One was 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 awesome, but it came out of left field a little bit. People weren't expecting it to be so good. Yeah, I think, I think that so, Solo yeah. was so hot on the tails of that, wasn't it? It was like yeah, it was like we had the Last Jedi, we had Solo, we had that, and it just felt like a lot of Star Wars. Star Wars always feel always felt like a prestige. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Well, well. It, <laughs> Star Wars always felt like a prestige banner, like when it was released. You know, if, even if you look back, you know, to the original, you know, in 77, and then you look at the release dates of the following on movies, you know, there was a lot of time in between them. Oh, yeah. You know, and having like a year here, a gap here, like a month between shows or six months between, you know, Star Wars series, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit um, flogging. Flogging, I don't want to say a dead horse, but flogging a uh, flogging a Sarlacc pit. Oh, it's the brand, isn't it? It's just Disney, isn't it? Milking it for everything it's got. Yeah. Um, understandably. Mm. Milking it for all of its green, blue space milk. <laughs> for every last drop of that space milk. <laughs> milk. Yeah. Milk. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, until they release something truly bad, which I don't think they've quite done yet then mm. uh did you watch I'll, the book I'll of just, <laughs> <laughs> i enjoyed some of that i agree it wasn't like the best series but i still enjoyed some of it and i enjoyed Look, some of it in, to... hey invite the mods let's get the mods out let's go fight with some mods the mods <laughs> oh, dear God. yeah it, don't yeah let's not talk about that but 
Oh, all right. Maybe I'm changing my mind a bit. But yeah, I, uh, well, I think that's been, we're going to talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi in a little bit. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let, we'll see. I mean, we, we f- I feel like it's every week that we do the new section that we're having to report some sad news. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, th- those of you that love your gangster movies, will be very, very sad to have learned of the loss of the amazing Ray Liotta, um, who died this week. Um, he died uh, at, the, at the, I think, fairly young age of 67. Yeah, right. You know, especially when you consider a lot of the, his contemporaries and, and co-stars in the likes of Goodfellas, you know, they're still alive and kicking and making movies. You know, I think it's really sad to have lost Ray. I think he was a great uh, character actor. Um, I really like you know, his, his performances across the board in a lot of, a lot of things he's in, he brings such intensity to, to many of his, his roles. I mean, obviously Henry Hill and Goodfellas, you know, you can't, you just, it's just an incredible, incredible turn. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you're a big fan of, um, the Kevin Costner movie, Field of Dreams, Phil, but I've not seen it for a long time, but Mm. yeah, I remember liking it. Um, Shoeless Joe Jackson in that. Yeah. Like a, a, an instance of him not playing a super intense and actually emotive, you know, passive, more passive role. Um, yeah. But, you know, he, he was just in so, in so many good, his, he was so good in everything. He was never bad. He was always on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's the kind, of, the kind of actor that I think will be missed, you know, in, 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 those, kind of, in those kind of roles. Um, yeah. But yeah. You could say was, he got typecast a little bit, but I suppose... He proved himself mm. in other places, though, you know, with that. I mean, the last thing I saw him in was um, uh, The Many Saints of Newark, which came out right. like, last year or the year mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and again, in that, he was brilliant, like a ter- just a terrifying mob character, mm-hmm. you know. Um, just, yeah, just one of those sort of performances. And uh, I'll say like typical mob performances, but they have to be done well, where mm-hmm. they just make you feel really uneasy. Yeah. That's uh, him. And he was brilliant. He was brilliant at it. Yeah, because the, the fact that he could just turn on a dime, basically, and become, you know, an absolute lunatic. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree. Really, really sad news. And um, again, like we said, it seems to be a kind of weekly occurrence for us. But I think this yeah. one was kind of a big deal because it's like, wow, you know, the kind of actor that you expect to be around, like, be around forever. And again, you know, of a very, very young age. Um, I actually learned something about him that I didn't know that um, previously when I was doing a little bit of research for the pod, but that's that he was actually adopted. All right. Yeah, that he was actually raised by um, Italian-American parents in New Jersey, but he, in his 40s, met up with his birth mother and actually learned that he had other siblings. And, and you know, he, he, I think he had a lot of resentment until his later, his later years, but he learned to his surprise that his ancestry wasn't actually Italian. He was, he's actually Scottish. Um, oh, right. So, you know, such a such a you know a sad story, but someone that really made peace with that, um, which is kind of a kind of a you know kind of a sad thing to, for someone yeah. to go to. So there you go, Ray Liotta, then who died uh, at age sixty seven. Um, let's let's go to a happy place, Phil. Yes. Where are we going? Trailer section. Uh, let's jump on over there. Okay, hang on. Let me just put my hold my hand on. Hold my hand. Okay. We'll jump together. Okay, three, two, one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Your noise is well happy. Ah. Slapped your bum on the way over. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, there we are then. In the t- into the trailers. Into the trailer. Deep into the trailer section, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed. Um. Now. I, how many have you got to do? Because I don't know what you've got. I've got, I've actually got like four, <laughs> but oh, I'll just, shit. I'm not going to review them. I'm just going to talk about them very briefly. So it's not like, all right. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll quickly go through two. Thanks uh, for listeners. Thanks I, for hanging out with us while we uh, workshop the podcast, by the way. I really do appreciate <laughs> you guys. Sticking they understand in the way the we work, Miles. <laughs> um, oh, I, I like the fact that we don't know apart, from, you know, so we, we don't know our own names. Off who, the cuff. who are you? Off the cuff. We should have called. We should have called it movie mouth. Off the cuff. Off the muff. Off the cuff. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to quickly mention Pat two trailers. Phil oh, off, the <laughs> Phil yeah, off the cuff. Pat and Phil off the cuff. 
Uh, yes. Uh, right. I'll mention two really quickly. They're both mm-hmm. Disney, uh, Disney Plus. <laughs> One oh, of them, I'm believe it or boy. not, is about Star Wars. So, oh, Jesus Christ. We'll start with Andor. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this has become like my Marvel every time you mention it. It really Marvel, has. It's like oh. Star Wars. God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Andor. Uh, just really quickly, again, it you know came out because uh, Star Wars Celebration 2022. They released the first look at Andor. Um, Is that are those his pronouns, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars and or and um, or yeah. Go on. Um, so this is following. Speaking of Rogue One, the Rebel mm. Spy who uh, appeared in Rogue One, uh, which again, like as we said earlier, was uh, probably still my favorite of all of the newer Star Wars things mm-hmm. that have come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the trailer looks really cool. I'm looking forward to it. Again, I'm not going to go into it too much, but that's been released. It's coming out as a series on August the 31st on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. So go check out that trailer. Written by Tony Gilroy as well, by the way, who wrote and finished directing um, Rogue One. He stepped oh, in. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. he, he stepped in at the end when Gareth, Gareth Evans was pulled off the, off the shoot um, and replaced by oh, him. that's cool. They've said that it's going to have a two, um, like they've done with Obi Wan Kenobi. It's got a two episode premiere, uh, and it's also revealed that it's going to be twenty four episodes long in total. I saw that. It's two seasons. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve episodes that's, each. That's so big balls. There's quite a commitment. That yeah, is. Right. That's like, yeah. well, this is great. Let's do two two seasons of this. Yeah. Um, Smash the cash on that one. But again, we know what happens to him. <laughs> There's no where's the where's the thrills and spills. We can we just like do a marvel sorry not marvel i do i do love marvel i do i'm thinking about marvel all the time on i feel can we just <laughs> yeah, do a are. can we do a you got the hulk tattooed on your ass i have got the whole well you don't want to know where he's tattooed but <laughs> needless to say you won't like him when he's angry oh i was just about to say that <laughs> <laughs> it's your cock tattooed green yeah no it's it's, <laughs> it's the it's the incredible purple hulk <laughs> oh i've just choked oh god yeah it's um, oh, it's the it's the incredibly disappointing purple Hulk. Is is to give him his full name, <laughs> and you won't like him when he's angry. It's just me walking down the road with my penis in my hand. <laughs> Got out. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's let's move on. Please. I'm sorry, everybody. I know that my my girlfriend's father listens to this podcast. I'm terribly sorry for that. Woman. <laughs> I'm actually not. I don't care. Um. Moving on. Uh, oh, let's stay in. Uh, let's stay in Lucas territory, shall we? Did you watch the Willow? Trailer? Yeah, let's. I did. Yes, he's back, isn't he? Little he's, Willow. He's back. Um, <laughs> that's, all, that's what you call yours, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Little Willow. Yeah. <laughs> I call mine Mad Mardigan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's uh, go. Yes. So on November the thirtieth on Disney mm-hmm. Plus, um, uh, Willow will be coming out as a series on. Uh, well, on Disney Plus, I've just said that. Um, so it's the uh, sequel to the 1988 fantasy film of the same name. Yep. Uh, and again, it was uh, introduced at Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim. Um, we got Warwick Davis returning. Um, and we've got uh, Ron Howard uh, directing as well, who did the, uh, was the original film's director. Um, so awesome. I think, yeah, I think it, the trailer looks really cool. It looks like it could be really good fun and it's not Star Wars. <laughs> no. <Thank laughs> um, God. yeah, I've not, to be fair, I've not seen Willow for a long time. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should go on a diet, Phil. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. Go, you should go on a diet. You might see it again. Um, <laughs> What I will say about Willow while you are crying into your hands um, is that it's a it's a great movie. If you go on, a, if anyone wants to go back and watch the original Willow movie uh, directed by Ron Howard with um, someone we're going to be talking about later on in the podcast, Val Kilmer, but also yeah. uh, obviously Warwick Davis, you should go watch it because I remember as a kid in particular that, that I watched that movie and I was like, this is a great movie. This is a great movie. But it hasn't. Yeah. It's not one of those ones that I've kind of revisited a lot, like you said. You know, no. Um, it's not really one that we've kind of done that. I'm going to move on quickly into a couple of the trailers that I've seen. 
Um, yeah. Then I've got a special treat for you, okay? Oh, Jesus, after this conversation, <laughs> not I really it's not hope it's not that. that. Um, I've got something a bit different for this section. Oh, okay. It's well worth Phil's it. Phil's got something a bit different for this section. Lucky it's not yeah. a video podcast, that's all I can say. Um, yeah. Have you seen the trailer for Man vs. B? <laughs> no, you are gonna, I haven't. You are going to fucking love this, Philip. I've not even um, heard of it. This is Netflix's new movie about a man versus a bee. Yeah. Right. It's literally that. And it's starring Rowan Atkinson. Oh my God. Of Mr. Bean fame. So wow. this follows Rowan Atkinson as a as a man who he's he becomes a house sitter for a wealthy lady when she goes away on vacation. And basically a bee decides to it's this huge modern mansion that he's in, and he's just, you know, taking these amazing showers and like swimming in the pool and driving the Jaguar E type around, you know. And he's basically gets harassed by this bee. So it's basically Rowan Atkinson, like a kind of Mr. Bean type character, just yeah. constantly trying to swat a bee away and, you know, setting the house on fire and like <laughs> blowing everything up, basically. It looks awesome. Okay. I have to say it looks wow. really good. And uh I I laughed at the trailer. So Okay. I that sounds laugh. interesting. I can't Man imagine them doing B. anything other than Mr. B. Mr. Bean no. character for Mr. that. Mr. B. For role. No. Mr. That's B. That's what they should call it. Mr. B. He's like, come on, Teddy. <laughs> Hello, Teddy. <laughs> come on. Hello, Hello Teddy. Honey, Teddy. Um, <laughs> bloody B. Bloody B. Um, <laughs> B. So there's that. That comes out in July in Netflix, on Netflix. And then, of course, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. We got a, finally got a name and a trailer for the new Mission Impossible movie. Mission Impossible 7. Uh, which is now known as Mission Impossible colon Dead Reckoning. Yes, um, I and see this, actually. It looks pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of does. steam trains in this. Mm. A lot of steam trains in this trailer, yeah. um, which I wasn't expecting. But it also does finish in most Mission Impossible trailer uh, ways with a huge stunt. And we see Tom Cruise in Norway doing a backflip off of a dirt bike and flying into a fjord and opening a parachute and flying off. So as you do. As you do. And it is actually Tom Cruise doing that. We talked about that before as a stunt. I feel like because that's been promoted already on social media, like a lot of people filmed it and shared it. I feel like it didn't have the impact. A lot of people are excited mm-hmm. about this. I I love this fran- franchise, but I also feel a little bit uh a little sense of oh, okay, here we go again. It's cut and cut copy, you know, that's yeah. same old beats. Um, but it does introduce yeah. some new characters. It looks fun. Um, and that's coming out later this year. So, yeah, no doubt find a big screen to watch the new Mission Impossible movie. For sure. Should we do this weird thing that you wanted to do with me? What are we doing here, Phil? Tell me. Yeah. Talk us so, through listeners, it. right. A, quick, a very quick setup for this. So, I saw a trailer come up on YouTube um, for admittedly what looks to be quite the low budget film. <laughs> and I thought it would be fun. <laughs> to send a link to Miles right now to watch this and give his reaction live to... um, Miles, have we seen the link in our little software that we Um, use for the... the, uh, If you go to the the chat, there's a link for you. No, I've not. It's not there. Um, Oh, is it in the... It's in here. Is it in here? It's in there. It's in there. Okay. Have you got it? I've got it. Yes. So so this is for the... (laughs) This is for the film... Um, Oh called my goodness, Titanic six six six. You've heard that right. Oh, I can hear the audio you're in, okay, but yeah, no, I turned it down. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to let you just watch that, Miles, and just have a little talk through what you see. Right, um, as I'm you're just watching. waiting for the yeah, for the uh, okay, Titanic. What's it called? Titanic six six six. Okay, yeah. I'm strapping in. Uh, okay, and. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to explain what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing a zombie playing a violin on the deck of the Titanic and people screaming. <laughs> it's a strong uh, start. Yeah. Now I can see a very bad CGI Titanic in a dock somewhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> and what appears to be Walmart Chris Evans uh, in the back of a limo doing a video blog about going on the Titanic. Um, okay. It's the Titanic leaving the dock with a big music festival. The entire ship appears to be crewed by young, attractive women. Um, yep. <laughs> now, there's a lot of dead air on this. 
It's a 2B yeah. original. I don't even know what 2B is, but no. I will be I will be downloading that app and subscribing to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's, what, what, there's people looking if... for hidden treasures on this boat. And they're sneaking around with a video log. And someone appears to be calling on spirits to rise. This is probably the most disrespectful thing for victims of the Titanic that I can imagine. So that so they're okay. So from the sound of things, they're resurrecting the crew of the Titanic, or the, the the dead yeah. passages of the Titanic. Okay. That's because yeah, people are trying to steal the 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 antiquities of the the Titanic and they're angry. The ghosts are angry. Oh my god. It appears to be heading for an iceberg in a recreation of the exact disaster. And yeah. There are zombies. There's zombies. Zombies. This looks like uh pretty The shittest thing you've ever seen in Terrible, life? yeah. It looks it looks really fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um I just wanted you to share my pain after I thought, oh, what's that? That looks weird. Well um, the top the top comment on, on YouTube is this is the movie of the year. Director, cinematographer, acting, score, screenplay. Cannot wait for it to be released. I will buy the first ticket. A masterpiece. Two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, the other comment I can see on YouTube on that is, can you imagine someone seeing this written on paper and was like, oh my God, we're going to be so rich. This is an amazing idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry to put you through that, but I just thought oh, uh, it, uh, you had to do it. I don't know. I Titanic 666. Could it be... Next year's big Oscar winner. We'll find out. <laughs> it looks truly, and the winner truly for old. best director. No, I, I think, think that, that looks really dreadful, and uh, I'm a hundred percent down to watch it one night. Me too. So Me too. you know, that's not mince words here. Uh, I'm going to watch it. It's got a kind of Sharknado <laughs> vibe, right? It's like kind of yeah, you know, it's that bad. That it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we hope you enjoyed all that dead air and me watching something and explaining what I was seeing. Um, <laughs> I certainly didn't. Uh, should we move on to some spoiler-free reviews for the listeners, Phil? Let us do that, yes. Please. Okay, do you want to put treat? hold my hand before we jump? You ready? <laughs> Three, okay. Two, one. Caca! We've got to stop doing this. We've got to stop doing this. This is really uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, all right. So I strapped myself in <laughs> to watch uh, Top Gun Maverick this year. So this is a movie that was supposed to come out way back before the, during the pandemic mm -hmm. and was delayed by Paramount. Um, Paramount put a lot of money into this production. Uh, and I would say for right reason, they held it back. Uh, they didn't want it to be released on any of the streaming platforms. Uh, they didn't yeah. want people to just sit at home and watch it. Um, and they wanted to make it a big banner summer blockbuster movie, which they've absolutely done. This is directed by Joseph Kaczynski, who um, I really love his movies um, in a minority, but I loved Tron Legacy. I loved Oblivion also with Tom Cruise. Um, so this, you know, this kind of, well, it directly follows on from the events to some extent of the previous Top Gun movie in that we catch up with, with Maverick, played by Tom Cruise, 36 years later. Um, he's a test pilot. He's basically flying, you know, these kind of SR-17 type blackbirds, you know, at, at certain high speeds and velocities. Um, and we find out that he's still a captain. He, he never really, you know, moved on within his, within his career. There's a, a comment from that someone makes at the beginning, uh, about him, you know, should have been a Senator by now, you know, that least of all, you know, an Admiral, but he's still just a lowly, fairly lowly captain. Um, he, through various events, is called back to um, to Top Gun, which is basically the American Naval uh, Academy for Training uh, fighter pilots. So he gets yeah. called back to take care of a group of young upstarts, just as we saw in the original Top Gun movie. But in this time, he's gone from being the apprentice to the master. So... To, to make things, to ramp up, I would say, some of the tension here, um, part of that group um, also includes Miles Teller, who is playing Rooster, um, who happens to be the son of Maverick's former backseat pilot, 
uh, Goose, who died in mm. Top Gun, the first Top Gun movie. So yeah. there's a huge, you know, moral dilemma there for Maverick having to train someone that he wants to kind of protect. And obviously Rooster himself kind of pushing against Maverick, not really wanting to be trained by someone that he, to some extent, holds responsible for the events that happened to his dad and some other events that we find out during the movie. Um, the cast is also rounded out by Jennifer Connelly, who steps in um, to play uh, Penny, who is kind of a replacement for um, Kelly McGillis, but isn't really said that she's the same character. She's He, he knows, he's known her for a long time, um, but she works in a bar and and like has pretty much lives in the same house, it looks like, but she's right. not the same character. Um, and, and she's in there for the kind of romantic, you know, aspect. And it is, there are, to some extent, there are some, you know, carbon copy elements from the first movie in, into this movie. What I will say first off is Tom, Tom Cruise looks so young in this movie. It's unbelievable. This guy's like 60. Yeah. He, he looks unbelievable in this movie. He looks so, yeah. like, he looks like our age. He looks our age, which is, of course, yeah. 21. Um, but he looks super young. Um, it's, so, it's so distracting. You're like, this guy's, everyone around him, like, you know, you... Not to give too much away, but obviously Val Kilmer, who's been through a lot recently, had a, a lot of issues with throat cancer and, you know, can no longer speak. There are moments where we see, you know, flashes to his character. And Val Kilmer, you know, he looks old. You know, mm. Tom Cruise kind of looks, still looks young. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah. What, what I have to say about the things that people really want to know about first, which is the, the flight scenes, Tom Cruise being in a plane, and th the fact is, and, and not everyone seemed to know this, but the actors were all in these planes. They were flying in the back seat of the planes and they were being filmed. They paid the Navy something like $100,000 every few hours just to be up in these planes. Every mm. actor went up in the planes and was pulling Gs, basically. And it shows. Yeah. It's so real. It's so realistic. And yet, not you know fuzzy cameras or GoPro cameras. It's the, the, the quality of the camera work is incredible. Cinematographer on this, one of my favorite cinematographers, uh, Claudio Miranda, who was also a cinematographer on all of Joseph Kaczynski's previous films. He won the Oscar for um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button with David Fincher, and he worked with David Fincher mm -hmm. for a long time. Here's that, that kind of crisp um, David Fincher aesthetic to, to a lot of his, his, his shots. Um, symmetry and so on, you know. Um, awesome. There's a scene where um, you see Maverick flying off the deck of a... a of an aircraft carrier and it's in the trailer and it just kind of just kind of pulls up immediately and almost inverts and it is stunning it's like wet like you're just going to sit there in this movie and your your lower gut is going to hurt from the just the tensing of it of just <laughs> you know like holding on basically i yeah. saw this in imax um it was loud as fuck it was like being yeah. on the flight deck and some people don't like that you know to some extent but i it was it was Honestly, I could feel the vibrations in the seats. I wasn't in one of those 4DX screenings, which I'm still, jury's out for me on really going to those because I like to watch the movie. Um, yeah. But I felt, I felt like I'm there and, and like I was caked in sweat coming out of this movie. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so elating and so intense. It's like being on a roller coaster. It's like being in the planes yourself. Um, right. And, it's, and, and what's weird is, so... We're going to talk a little bit about the the old the original Top Gun. This also brings in that that you know emotional that relationship element that I mentioned with Penny with Jennifer Connelly. Mm -hmm. um, oh, by the way, just speaking about Jennifer Connelly, just a little inside thing. The first time we see Jennifer Connelly is in a bar and she's talking to Maverick, and in the background, um, David Bowie's "Let's Dance" is playing. Oh, just let that sink nice in for little, a second. Yeah, nice little link there. Link to Labyrinth. Yeah. Yeah. Which of course yeah, she like was that. in with, with yeah. Bowie. So really cool little things like that. Um, but what I will say about that whole thing is, you know, you're not sitting there the whole time thinking, okay, let's get back up in the planes now. Like you are in the first movie, Tom Cruise and Jennifer Connelly had great chemistry in this. And, and actually many of the car, I mean, Ed Harris is in this, uh, John Hamm is in this. There are so many incredible scenes. There's an, a really emotional scene with Val Kilmer in this. Um, and it's not just about the, the him getting up in a plane and then flying around. It's it, there's more to it than that. Um, it's it really is. It really, I, I found it touching, and it's it's unusual for me to find like a blockbuster movie like that to that extent. You know, fairly touching. I think it's, it's, mm. there's very few examples of that. Um, 
but it managed to carry it off. You're not just sitting there going, okay, great. Okay, move on, move on, move on. Let's let's see him in a plane. It's 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 a it's a fully thought out, fully well written movie, and it actually was joined by Christopher McQuarrie, who's been Tom Cruise's kind of saving grace in recent years. He stepped in on Edge of Tomorrow to finish the rewrites on that. He stepped in on Mission Impossible, you know, directed the last the last few movies. He's directing the new one. Um, he tends to touch up and polish a lot of Tom Cruise movies, and he stepped in on this one and probably added a lot of those character beats, that emotional element. Um, and yeah, it, it it packs a punch. Everyone by now, by the time this podcast goes out, will have heard that this movie is, you know, worth a watch. That it's you know the the blockbuster of the summer and blah 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 blah. And there are a lot of people that don't like Tom Cruise because of Tom Cruise, but I would say that you can in this film you can definitely put that aside. Um, you know, I went to see it with someone that isn't a huge Tom Cruise fan, but really loved this movie. So, you know, with that said, you know, definitely, you know, take your, take your dad or go with, go with your family to go watch this or, or go, just go see it. I would say, because you're going to, mm. everyone that goes to see this will get a lot out of it. And, um, you know, when it comes to th- uh, cinematic thrill ride, I can't really think of any movie that's been this exhil- that's this exhilarating as it is. Um, and, you know, I haven't even mentioned the music. You know, you've got Hans Zimmer in there doing the music. You've got the Harold yeah. Faltermeyer original, you know. It's just, yeah. it's ridiculous. This movie is, it's ridiculously stacked. Um, and Paramount were totally right to leave it, hold it back. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Top Gun Maverick gets a big fat fucking recommendation from the Movie Mouth podcast. Uh, definitely go watch it. I'll probably go watch it again because um, I don't want to really see it at home. Uh, I definitely want to see it in the in in the theater. Uh, and yeah, I mean, one other thing I will say, and this is you know kind of a big thing, is that it's one of the very few sequels that is much better than the original, and the original is a classic. Mm-hmm. Oh, much better than bold the statement. Yes, but it is. It's the real. It's the real deal, and everyone in it is, you know, it, it, everyone in it is is working. They're all doing the right moves. They're all making the right choices from an acting perspective, and the directors and the music and everything. And it all just works like a like a symphony of, you know, imperialist fist pumping action. <laughs> <laughs> um, well I should so, yeah. look forward to going to see it I haven't seen it yet so I'm looking forward to it yeah definitely definitely go see it definitely go see it I'll be excited to see what you think of it uh, and if you do go to IMAX I got lucky actually I got, they gave me like a free poster and like a, a commemorative keychain or pin badge or something so I got some mm-hmm. free stuff going to see it so if you do get a chance to go see it in IMAX then uh, definitely recommended to see it as a lot of the scenes were filmed in IMAX as well awesome all right. So moving on, uh, Phil, I've got written down here only wank knobby. Oh no, sorry. Oh, oh, Obi, Obi one Kenobi. Kenobi. Is it? What is it? <laughs> Obi wank knobby. Uh, <laughs> only wank knobby. <laughs> oh god. Yes. So uh, on Star Wars again. Um, <laughs> it is like Marvel. Uh, so I, yeah, I think you've watched them as well, haven't you? The first, I've seen the first two episodes of the new Obi Wan Kenobi I, series. I've seen, them. Uh, I've seen them. You've seen both, have you? Okay, I've, I've seen them. So let's discuss. So I mean, this um, series, I think, as Miles mentioned earlier on, is set after the events, uh, or ten years after the events of. Uh, Episode three, Star Wars episode three, which is probably best less said about that, the better. Um, (laughs) Because I just didn't enjoy those films. But still, uh, it's good to see Ewan McGregor back as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this follows him as he watches over 10-year-old Luke and Leia, um, as he promised to do uh, 10 years before. And he was uh, sort of sworn as their protector. So yeah, first two episodes. Again, I'm not going to go into spoilers or anything like that. But I think a really, really a quite strong start to the first two episodes. Um, I said it's built up nicely. Um, 
a lot starts a lot more starts to happen in the second episode um and yeah it's it's hard to talk about this without <laughs> any uh, sort of spoilers but i think it does link things nicely um i think it's it's as per the standard of i think most of the other star wars series is, that have come out in you know the last couple of years on disney plus it they all look great the you know top notch special effects and cgi and um yeah i just i've just enjoyed it what what have your thoughts been on on the that on the first couple at least i yeah i think it's i think it was a wise move that disney released two episodes the first the first day rather than the one because i think the first episode yeah. Was a little drab. I, I was like, "This is oh god, like oh, a bit depressing." It's just, it's depressing. He was just sitting there, you know, doing whatever he does. You know, again, not going to go into too many spoilers, but chopping up his space fish and living, sleeping in the cave. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was a bit dull. Um, a bit of an anticlimax, I would say. Um, mm. You know, even with the with the like the introduction of the 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 Jedi Inquisitors, these kind of Sith dark yeah. uh, force inquisitors that are looking for Jedi throughout the universe after, of course, Order 66. in Who are three. ex-Jedi themselves. Who are all ex-Padawan learners. Um, yeah. It, which seemed quite cool. Rupert Friend's in there. Um, it's quite interesting, actually. Here's, here's a good point. Did you know one of them is played by Sung Kang? Do you know who Sung Kang is? Yes, I do. <laughs> who does he play in Fast and Furious? <laughs> he, well, no, I don't. Oh, no, wait a minute. No. All right. No, I take that back. I thought it was someone else. <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> no, I take it all back. So no, in, I take it all back. In Fast and Furious, he plays a character from Korea, Seoul, called Han Sol O. That's actually his character oh, from the main gang okay. in Fast and Furious. And now Han Sol Han Sol O is now in Obi Wan Kenobi as a wow. J- Jedi Inquisitor, um, which is the pretty link. funny. Uh, uh, I've actually just looked him up and it's completely not who I thought it was so yeah I'll take it all back yeah. I have no knowledge nice job uh, well played yeah sorry um, lucky you didn't bring it up earlier uh, yeah. so yeah I mean there was that and then I think moving into the second episode you know yes of course it picks up a little bit so I think that's why they, they probably did that um, I just think that like this, like there's a lot of green screen in this it felt a very I remember, I remember you and McGregor saying um, about George Lucas in the prequels that you know he was being asked to get on a big green box and pretend it was a giant space lizard that he was climb- that he was running around yeah. on, and then he found yeah. it very hard to have to deal with, you know, acting in that world, and mm. that he didn't really enjoy it. For pretty much one of the first scenes we see of him, he's probably sitting on a big green box on a green screen, riding on a space camel. You know, it's. I was like, <laughs> right, here we are again. Ah, the old money yeah. running out. Is it you and? Um, but yeah, <laughs> kind of. I don't know. It was. I, I just feel like, again, you know, a lot of green screen and and there's a scene in the second episode where there's a lot of people marching around in this on this planet that they're on, and it's like they're just marching up and down the same street. And I was like, why are they just going <laughs> up and down the same street? <laughs> like, oh, because the budgets. Um, yeah, so yeah, but I do man. love the aesthetic of that town. I do. I, I, I think mm. it looks really cool. Like it know. did look cool. Yeah, it did look cool, and there was some cool stuff in there. I just, yeah, I just, I was deeply underwhelmed by it. Um, we should probably talk about the music, though. I mean, John Williams came back to conduct the uh, Obi Wan's theme, which is the closing theme. What did you think of that? Uh, very good. Yeah, it sounds very John Williams esque. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd, yeah, I, I just think, well, it's always going to be good with his name's on it, isn't it? Really, let's yeah. be honest, <laughs> he yeah. can't really do much wrong. No, definitely. He, the score was also completed by Natalie Holt, who did this the score to the other Disney Plus show, Loki Marvel show, which I thought was mm. an amazing score, and and I'm really happy she's working on this. And just an aside, on a side note for you, Phil, she's from Worthing, so she's a local mm. gal to where Phil and I, I was there the other day. Uh, used, used to live. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, well done, Natalie. Really good work on the score. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Let's, you know, we'll see what happens in, in that show. I think there's another four episodes left on that. Um, I think, you know, mm. I, I alluded to it earlier. The only issue I have with these prequel shows or prequel movies is that we know the fate of a lot of these characters and therefore the stakes for me are considerably lower 
than if you're watching yeah. an original like Rogue One. You didn't know what was going to happen because you had no idea. What, you know, you knew they were going to get the plans of the Death Star, but you didn't know how, and you didn't know the outcome, yeah. and there was an outcome. Yeah, that's what made it awesome. This, yeah, I'm right. like, okay, right, okay. Oh no, they're going on this mission, and oh, they might die. But they're not going to fucking die, are they? Because we've seen them in fucking <laughs> six more movies. I um, know the future. <laughs> yeah that's why there was this awesome moment where phil just said that line and then just stopped and looked up and looked <coughs> for about 10 times and it was just a wonderful <laughs> moment um yeah well so we'll see how it plays out but yeah i think for now yeah. we recommend it yeah star wars yeah phil's steer wars we'll have to start calling you um, call you Marvel Miles, Mild Marvel Milesville, Milesville. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, from my perspective, there was a lot of TV out this week. Um, the big one for me was Stranger Things season four, um, which yes, I think a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I've watched like four episodes of it already. Oh, have they released it all at once? Aye. It's Netflix. Oh, no. It's a Netflix production. So, oh, but yeah. It's, Better Call Saul comes out weekly. But it's not a Netflix production. It's an AMC production. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even on... I think it is on Netflix here. But yeah, you, yeah it's, a, it's a Netflix production. So it's... It, you know, they, they release everything on, on one day, allowing you to binge. Binge the binge. hell out of it. Binge. So, okay, I'm going to assume that many people listening to this have seen, you know, up until season three. Phil, you've seen up season three, right? I have, but it's so long ago. Are you? I can't fully remember what happened. <laughs> I have not heard that Stranger Things in quite some time. A very long <laughs> time. Was it three years? Since well, season... uh, it's been three years, um, but in, in, the, in the show world, it's only been a year. So okay. at the end of season three... Uh, listen, listeners, switch off now. If you would like to not hear this, just skip ahead about 15 seconds. Um, Eleven, played by Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, Joyce, played by Winona Ryder. And um, Jonathan Byers and Will Byers relocate from Hawkins, the town in Indiana, where they've had basically the mouth to hell or the upside down opening and tearing all their lives upside down. <laughs> um, they moved, they moved to California, um, where they are living out their days in high school. Um, we also know, of course, uh, that uh, Mike Wheeler, played by Finn Wolfhard, uh, Lucas, Dustin, um, Max, uh, and Nancy, and of course, Steve Harrington, they're all still back in, in Hawkins. And they're all dealing with going to high school and growing up and that kind of thing. Um, this, this focuses on, um, I would say, kind of bringing the gang back together is probably where the the kind of initial few episodes are, are on. Um, mm. There's also some awesome stuff uh, in Russia, which I won't go into, but there's some really cool stuff happening in, in Russia. Uh, of course, in the previous show, in the previous season, we saw Russian uh, troops that were actually underneath the mall in Hawkins somehow, um, and were plotting to, you know, open up the upside down in, in, in the USA. Um, mm -hmm. the, the main villain of this, it, this is, so this is an interesting one. So, the main villain of this wasn't re hasn't really been seen in any other, you know, show so far in Stranger Things in any other season, and so they kind of it's almost like they've kind of ended Stranger Things at the end of season three. It almost felt like it was all over, which at the time I didn't think, but now the way this has kind of jumped forward a little bit, it almost feels like they, like they they kind of moved on but it's almost like they've just restarted a, a series for the sake of restarting a series it doesn't really feel like there's much point to it that it's joined up it's connected the right. villain that's in this again not a spoiler but he he isn't he's not appearing in the other seasons and you're seeing you know menacing looks of this this character you know looking over all of the stuff and sending these people off into the upside these like dem demogorgons and demodogs mm. off into the upside down and saying go do this you know He's like the big bad, but it's like because he was never really present, never really alluded to in any of the other seasons, it's almost like they've gone, shit, we need a villain. Um, all right, let's get this guy in. We're going to put him in there. And then we're just going to say, well, this is the main villain and this is the guy that was behind it all. 
And it's like, okay, right, fine. Right. Let's just do that. It feels a little cynical. Um, right. Not everyone would agree with that, but I feel like, you know, when we've been spoiled with the likes of Thanos, you know, popping up at the end of the first Avengers movie in 2012, almost eight years before the likes, you know, of, um, of Endgame and so on, you know, before he really became a character. So we've been yeah. spoiled by that kind of thing, but there's just, there's no connectivity. There's not a lot of connectivity there. It feels like they're kind of just hashing this, this one out a little bit. That being said, it's still Stranger Things. So it's still awesome. It still looks good. It's still got a great soundtrack. It's still got great beats, great visuals, incredible CGI. And the chemistry, of course, between, you know, the main, the main gang is, is all there. You know, Dustin and Steve, you know, probably the standouts for a lot of people. Um, Max, yeah. um, you'll remember, so she was Billy's sister. Billy was the kind of main bully, the lifeguard in the previous season. She gets much yeah. more of a central role in this season, much more, um, much more to work with, I think, in this one. And she becomes quite a prominent character um, as well in this. And there are really interesting 80s beats. So again, you would have seen Stranger Things. You'll know, you know, Jim Hopper was named after Jim Hopper from Predator. You'll know there are lines in, you know, Stranger Things that are die hard or whatever else. And all that kind of referencing that's all happening here again, you know, in, yeah. in this show. There's a um, Silence of the Lambs scene type scene that happens in this which is really cool and really inventive and really fun um there's also cameos from a major 80s um horror movie character actor who i won't <laughs> let on who that is but always in there and uh and, and actually quite relevant to i would say the story of this um in terms of how the main villain is is using uh, a specific mechanic to 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 kill young kids right okay, it's all i'll say but once you've seen it you'll get it and you'll be like oh that reminds me of this series of 80s horror movies um so you know there's a lot going on i'm only four episodes in i'm going to stick through it obviously this is part one part two comes out later in the year um, and that will yep. be the final the final part of the season and the final part of the show it will be finishing this year um yeah and you know very very excited to see that so um yeah i think I think it's good. I think one thing they could maybe do is maybe kill off some of the the cast and maybe high, you know raise the stakes a little bit. I think maybe they could do that because it's a little bit like watching a slasher movie, you know, like Scream or Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween and no one actually dying that you really care about. And I think yeah. as long as main the main cast are just together and getting through it, you kind of just again the stakes are fairly low. I do think Netflix are playing a long game. I have a I have a feeling they may be going for an it chapter one, chapter two type thing, type scenario where in 10 years time, 15 years time, whatever, we may see this cast all grown up going back to Hawkins. That's, that's where I'm, I feel like this could yeah. be going. Um, yeah. And that could work, you know, so we'll see. Um, but, you know, fans of Stranger Things are not going to be let down. I loved it. I'm a big Stranger Things fan. I loved it. And I'm always looking for those little references. And yeah, you know, I think even if you're not, if you're not a Stranger Things, I've talked to a lot of people recently that have that don't want to start Stranger Things because it hasn't finished yet, or they've seen one season of it, or they want to go back and rewatch it. I would say go back, rewatch it. It's been a little while since it came out. Um, you'll yeah. fly through it, catch up with it, and get stuck into season four because it's awesome. So Stranger Things season four gets a a big old recommendation from the Movie Mouth Film and TV podcast. Phil, you're going to sit down and watch that this week. Do you think? I am, yes, for yeah. sure. For sure. Ding, ding, yes. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Awesome. I shall look forward to it. Awesome. So much like good TV coming out at the moment. It's been crazy with all the different shows yeah. and stuff. It's hard to, hard to catch up, isn't it? It is. Hard to keep abreast of it all, Miles. Well, do you know what? We should probably stop looking to the present and start looking to the past. Don't you agree? I agree. I like the it's, past. What is it time for? It's time for this. <laughs> yes, for our listeners, Video Store Corner is our classic film discussion section where we like to rent a movie from the Video Store era and sit down to watch it. Just like back in the old days and then we discuss it in spoiler filled detail 
And this week, we sat down to watch the original Top Gun, directed by the legend that was Tony Scott. Phil, turn and burn. Tell us what this movie was all about. It's about the planes, isn't it? The big sky planes and the bombs. That's it about... No, it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Top Gun, what a classic. Codenamed Maverick, Pete Mitchell, an oh. impetuous daredevil Navy pilot ace, is accepted into Top Gun, Miramar's elite fighter school. But there, the impulsive young pilot will have to compete with the best of the best, including Iceman, a brilliant and highly competitive fellow student. Now, Mitchell must give his all. However, his father's mysterious and untimely demise still haunts him. Can Maverick prove his worth to Charlie, the flying school's no-nonsense astrophysics instructor? Will he be able to suppress his wild nature to win the prestigious Top Gun trophy? We should find out. And you will have found out if you watched it. because it's been out <laughs> You will have found out. <laughs> I think what's, what's interesting about this movie, it came out at the time, when was it, 86, did you say? 86. Yes. What's interesting about this movie is it came out like peak, you know, America, pro-American, like Cold War, mm. anti-Russian sentiment, um, pro-military. You know, America hadn't been in a full-scale war since, what, Vietnam at this point um, for quite yeah. some time. Um, and, you know, it... It did a lot, I think. It, it really is. I mean, if you watch it, it could be, you know, a military propaganda movie quite easily. Like, in fact, I'll go it into is. this. Later. I mean, I'll go into that later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it is weird. You know, I think it's not everybody's cup of tea, so to speak, um, as, a, as a movie. Yeah. It's very macho, isn't it? It's a macho movie. Well, I mean, it's so macho, it's almost extremely homoerotic, isn't it? It's, I oh, mean, 100%. That's the kind of... oh, you just basically feel like walking outside of whatever room you've been in watching and slapping another man on the ass. Absolutely. Pre preferably on a yeah. bare naked ass. Um, yeah. Or just ass. in Y fronts. Yeah. Which, is, which a happens poke, in the film. A poke in the Y fronts. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I just poke, slap his Tighty ass whitey. on his Y front. Um, but no, I. I <laughs> And I kind of like all that stuff in this movie because it is so macho. It is so, you know, out there and, yeah, let's go with yeah. the best, you know. And it it really is, without a doubt, one of the best action movies of the 80s. Like, the the, the I, when I say the best, I mean the most well done. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's not, it's not like, I don't know if you ever saw... Um, uh, what was that movie with that with the heli with the helicopter? Oh um, God! Um, oh God! What was it called? Airwolf. That's Airwolf. Airwolf. Isn't it? It's not Airwolf. The series. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's not yeah. Airwolf. It's not. Um, did you ever see the Apache movie with with Nicolas Cage? No. Wings of the Apache. No. Oh, why well, haven't I not seen that? It's basically Top Gun, but with Nicolas Cage flying Apaches. Sounds helicopters. better than Top Gun. It does okay. sound better than Top Gun. Spoiler <laughs> alert, it's not. It's shit. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that. This is a great movie. Like, this is so well done, I think. Mm. In the most part, it's so well done. Um, it's also, it also runs out of steam in certain places. It's also kind of a romance movie, and, it, and it's like a date movie. It's like the perfect 1980s date movie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got a no, little bit for everybody. Yeah, right. No, I agree. But I it, I don't think... It, I think it's quite well paced, this film, though. It's just like it doesn't linger on anything for too long. It just gets on with it, doesn't it? Like It's, it's pretty relentless. Mm. And there's a... You know, yeah, there's a bit of a, a break for the lovey-dovey stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I think it needs it. Otherwise, mm. it is just a load of guys slapping themselves on the arse or back or wherever. Mm. Or, um, or wherever. Um, or whatever. Um, but I think, I think but, it's very much of its time and place. I think it's very much of its yeah. time and place. I think it's, it's kind of fairly poignant now with a lot that's going on in the world. Like watching it again, I was like, oh yeah, you know, I kind of see where this fits in. And obviously watching the sequel in the same, pretty much the same day. Um, mm. It does, 
you know, is it, it, it is of its time and place, but it is just a. It, I think it's a kind of movie where if it was on TV and you turn and you change the channel, and you you like, I'm going to watch this. Yeah, Top Gun's on. I'm going to. Well, I might as well leave that on. Yeah, I'll just leave that on. I'll just open twenty yeah. beers and just sit there and <laughs> you know what I mean. Watch Top Gun. Yeah, yeah. So what do you, what what are your you know your kind of memories of this? Is this something that you watched when you were a kid or when you were growing up, or is it was it ever like a big movie for you? Yeah, definitely. I, 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 to be fair, I, I did. It's the first time I'd seen it in quite a few years when I watched it. I watched it earlier today uh, in preparation for um, for this, and it, I, I've not seen it for a while actually, mm. uh, sort of longer than I thought. But um, yeah, r- remembered it all straight away. Definitely one I'd watched, you know, in my youth. I think there was a period like where I really liked Days of Thunder as well. Oh, um, another Tony Scott movie. Think, same di- yeah, Tony Scott, yeah, yeah. same director. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Stick the Tom tires, love well. the fires, cold trickle. Yeah, and it, I had the game of Days of Thunder on the Amiga 500. I had it on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, my God. And you just God. drive around yeah. and round in circles until one of your tires goes red and then you have to change it and then you have to change That's the other American one. American motor racing in a nutshell. NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. NASCAR. Yeah. Indy left 500. <laughs> All left. Best left turns yeah. in America. Yeah, how they made that exciting as a film, I don't know, but I did enjoy it. Mm. Um, yeah, and yeah, but I loved this film growing up. It was, yeah, it had planes and missiles and, you know, dogfights and macho guys and stuff. It was cool, wasn't it? I mean, spe- speaking of those dogfights, there's some weird stuff in that. So it, it, a lot of the plane scenes, obviously, they, they shot a lot of the plane scenes. Of course, the cockpit scenes, they were all shot on a, you know, on a, with a background, you know, like a projected background, but they're still, they yeah. still work. They still hold up, I think. Yeah. Um, and you see these, these scenes, particularly in the, in the, in the finale where they end up having a dog fight against, I don't think they actually say they're Russian Megs. They just say they're bogeys. Don't they? <laughs> they are implied. They have a red star. They do, on, but that could be a Chinese red star. It could no, be. A... That was the point I've read about this. And it is the point that they didn't want to <laughs> upset anyone. All the, all the bad guys in this are basically, you know, they have black planes. They're, you can't see their faces because their visors are all blacked out and they're just sort of nondescript. Uh, you never hear any of the uh, bad guys speak. They're nondescript bad guys, aren't they? Yeah. They're yeah. the baddies that they need yeah. to take out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can look at, <laughs> you can make your own mind up as to who you think the bad guys are. But, uh, yeah. That was, uh, and it's actually the same yeah. in the new movie as well. They do the same thing in the new movie. Funnily enough, well, I think they need um, to, don't they? Like, yeah, you know, why, yeah. why change it? Because you can't yeah. piss but off there, anyone. But there's some great. So in those during those dog fights, there's some great moments where you see these jets flying, and let's say you know Maverick goes and shoots one down. You see a cut. You know, there's a jet flying past, and there's a Mig, and they go after it, and then you see a rocket fire, and there's an edit, and then you see a plane trying to get away from a rocket, and then you see a plane blow up and then it cuts away. Yeah, you got him, Maverick, you got him. And then it cuts back to the plane that's been blown up and you just see like a plastic model just dropping out of the sky. Like it's like, <laughs> it's not like, you know, in, in yeah. movies where you see where, you know, it's CGI and stuff. And then, you know, when you see real planes get blown up, they kind of blow up and then they're going to fall and they're they kind of, you know, on a descent path. You know, it's like, yeah, they blow up and they just lose all trajectory and they just drop like a Drop. stone yeah. and they just like <laughs> yeah. windmilling down you know it's like I think it still look good though like yeah, it does look good it's good it does miniature look good. stuff you know? it does look good um, yeah you have to remember though I've been spoiled by a superior Top Gun film this week so, yeah right where you're like well that's all real where, and yet you're, yeah. you know and this is like mm. yeah this was definitely yeah. the standard for these kind of movies though like this. I don't think even they had the Paramount had the budget for blowing up thirty million dollar fighter jets. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is Paramount is blow up thirty million dollar fighter jets. All right. Um, yeah. No. Just I mean, buy a clearly. few, and they blow them up. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good, wouldn't it? For for me, so this movie, the thing I love the most about this movie, and I've always loved, mm. is the soundtrack. Great soundtrack. It's the for me. It's always been the best thing about the movie. Um, yeah. Harold Faltermeyer, Giorgio Moroder coming in, you know, from the Italo disco era and yeah. just putting in the most amazing uh, synth work and guitar work and uh, bringing in together, you know, Kenny Loggins for two songs and 
all these amazing, amazing songs on the soundtrack. I, I so long story short, but this soundtrack I never actually owned until I went to Miami in like 2004 or five, I think it was. The first mm. time I went to America, I went to Miami in the summer with some friends in a car. And we went to Walmart and we were like, what should we, what music should we buy for the, for the trip, for the drive down to Miami from Atlanta? <laughs> and we bought the Top Gun soundtrack on CD. Why wouldn't you? And holy shit. I mean, Miami is the city where the 90s never happened, but driving along Ocean Boulevard, listening to playing with the boys, <laughs> watching people <laughs> literally playing volleyball was such yeah. a vibe. It was such a nerdy yeah, right. moment, but it really, it, it was amazing. It was yeah. really amazing. So yeah. For me, the soundtrack to this is it's an absolute home run. I don't think, and this is this is saying something now, but I don't think there's a better soundtrack album to an 80s movie. And I include, you know, Dirty Dancing and the tra the Transformers movie in this. I think this um, is the, the greatest 80s might have to disagree with you because I think movie Back soundtrack. to the Future. Yeah, what? Well, but collectively, I'm talking about all the artists and oh. all the songs that are on it. You're sitting there no, listening well, to... Well, yeah. I, I suppose, Earth all right, yeah. Angel, Earth Angel. Yeah, no, you're right. All right. I'll take it back. I might agree with you then. Like, like in orchestral score-wise, Alan Silvestri, Back to the Future. Yeah, probably the best. The best days. But yeah. like, if you think about a mixed, you know, m music that inspired or music from the movie in the 80s, Top Gun for me. The Ghostbusters one's pretty good. Ghostbusters, yeah. It's pretty good. The diddle yeah. did, did it, the diddle did. But, <laughs> but up the Top Gun for me. It's Top Gun. Mm -hmm. It is good. It is good. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to disagree. I'm I've, on the same page. I've got it on vinyl as well. I need to get it on vinyl. Oh, you need to get it. I need to, I need to get it on 8-track is what I want to get it on. And <laughs> buy an old cassette tape. Camaro. And buy, buy an old take, Firebird. And just I'm going to take my boombox down to the beach and have it on my shoulder and play it via cassette tape. On the beach while playing right. uh, beach volleyball. Yeah. No, playing, I think that, that you um, know, I think it's a big thing. I think the soundtrack was awesome. Um what do you think about what do you think about Tom Cruise in this? How do you where do you stand on Tom Cruise in this movie? I think I think he's just playing Tom Cruise, isn't he? Playing like all the Tom Cruise roles that he does. I like little confident little man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say arrogant little prick, but you know, um, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think, but I think he's I great think, in it. I think he's absolutely brilliant in it. But he's also flawed. I think he plays a good, a good flawed character. Yeah, in the eighties, he admits his mistakes after yeah. a bit. Yeah, um, and yeah, I think he does it really well. How, how much of this movie were you sitting there watching it, thinking like I was? Um, oh, is this scene going to happen? And it actually being a scene from Hot Shots. <laughs> yeah there's a spooky kill you movie. till you die from it i will um, kill you till you die from it yankee bastard man so <laughs> th there's there's for those that haven't that didn't know i haven't seen it probably a younger audience hot shots is a spoof comedy uh which rips off for the first one anyway rips off top gun and yep. there's so much good stuff in it and when when they're talking about pete mitchell maverick's dad dying all I could all I could remember was that scene in Hot Shots where the his dad because it's word for word the same thing. Charlie Sheen plays like a Maverick character. Word for word that scene. There's a flashback and Maverick's plane. I think uh, Maverick's dad's plane in the in Hot Shots. The wings fall off. Well, one of the wings falls off and he climbs out of the cockpit, like walks along the back of the jet and like grabs hold of the wing and his arms are like stretching like rubber, like <laughs> and he's like stretch trying, Armstrong, stretch Armstrong, he's trying to hold on to it. And then he pulls the wing back and then he's like stood there. And then I think the break, the, the, the plane hits his quote unquote air brakes and he goes flying back and hits his nuts on the, on the aerofoil on the back of the plane <laughs> on, the tail. on yeah. the tail. And then, uh, and they're like, Oh, you know, he died in a horrific accident. And then you see the plane blow up, but he survives. He parachutes out, he lands in a tree and he gets dragged through a tree and you think, Oh, that's the end of it. He's actually survived. Maybe he's still alive. And then you see him stand up and he's got two of the, these twigs, these sticks are stuck to his helmet and he looks like a deer and you hear, there's one, shoot him! <laughs> and then he gets <laughs> shot by deer hunters. And yeah. it's just like the most amazing scene. So like in every reference in this movie, they're like, your dad, Maverick, he was a grade A, you know, um, <laughs> traitor. He let everybody down. He blah, blah, blah. You know, he died in dishonor. I just kept thinking about that scene. 
I just kept thinking <laughs> about that scene in Hot Shots. It's so well Hot done. Hot Shots ruined Top Gun for you. It, 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 I actually think it might be a better movie. <laughs> I've got a good bit of trivia about that, actually, that links it to Hot Shots. Mm. Do you want some trivia mm -hmm. now? Or do you want to speak to other things first? Uh, trivia! Trivia! Well, I'll start with that one then. So, uh, Matthew Modine turned down the role of Maverick because he objected okay. to the film's Cold War politics. Mm. Here's a list of names for you. Patrick Swayze, Emilio Estevez, Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, Matthew Broderick, Sean Penn, Michael J. Fox, Scott Baio, and Penn. Tom Hanks all turned down the role of Maverick. Wow. Uh, Janet of Graham, all of those, Scott Baio is the one that's like, fuck, <laughs> fuck it. Why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Janet Graham, Charlie Sheen, Jim Carrey, Rob Lowe, Kevin Bacon, Eric Stoltz, and Robert Downey Jr. were considered for the role as well. Oh, poor old Eric Stoltz. Eric so Stoltz, he was Marty McFly play, and then he was Maverick. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Charlie Sheen. It would have been amazing uh, if Emilio Estevez was was Maverick and Charlie <laughs> Sheen was Topper Harley. Topper Harley. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yeah. Because um, Sheen, it says, who was deemed too young for the role, would later go on to spoof the role in Comedy Hot Shots 1991. Amazing. I loved you in Wall um, Street. So yeah, I'll throw a bit more. There's so much trivia on this film because obviously it's a massive uh, cult classic film, mm -hmm. this, and there's so much trivia on it. But um, we were talking earlier on about it being basically a, a military propaganda film for the, the US Navy. So riding on the back of the film's success, the US Navy set up recruiting booths in major cinemas to try and catch some of the adrenaline-charged guys leaving wow. the screenings. Wow. They had the highest applications rate for years as a result. Wow. Apparently, it was a 500% take-up on um, applications wow. after Top Gun came out. So, and it was, they knew what they were doing like with it because obviously the, the military, the, US, the Navy had a lot to do with this film and mm -hmm. gave a lot of permissions and things. Um, and they said, do you want, I think, you know, there was like a bit of trivia that they said, do you want more stuff in it about, you know, signing up and stuff? And they were like, mm -hmm. no, because it's sort of propaganda enough as it is. And it obviously worked. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one I liked. So Tom Cruise is three inches shorter than Kerry McGillis, which bothered Paramount <laughs> greatly. Uh, to even up their heights, Cruz wore special cowboy boots that gave him a little height boost while Kerry McGillis didn't wear any shoes at all during their scene. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> and in fact, even in the last scene of this film, in the diner, you know, like the bar, yeah. when she, she reunites with him, she is apparently standing in like a trench that they made <laughs> in the set. Like, well, she's standing down lower. That's so it, funny. It, so I remember, I always part. remember Nicole Kidman saying, like, after um, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman divorced, um, like what they because obviously they met on the set of uh we're eyes wide shut huh oh no not eyes wide shut were they ever together before that one? no they were they were married during that uh, they met on oh, the right. set of days uh, of thunder and, oh days of thunder yeah yeah and i always remember they were like nicole like how do you feel about um what do you got to say about you and tom cruise getting divorced you went well, at least i can wear heels now <laughs> <laughs> brilliant oh yeah. dear um this is a cool one so charlie's older man date that uh in the officers club so you know when she, he first sees Charlie. Well, that's supposed to be her dad. Time. Well, no, it's she was having a meeting with someone, wasn't she? Because she didn't know about her job and stuff. That's then. right. But, uh, yeah. She said Charlie's well, older man date at the officers' club is actually the real life Viper, Pete Pettigrew. Viper's like the like the the leader of Top Gun, isn't he? Basically, right. yeah. Uh, he is a retired Navy pilot and Top Gun instructor, and shot down a MiG during the Vietnam War. He wow. served as a technical consultant on the film. So it's the actual real life Viper is the one that's sitting with Charlie in that scene. I wonder if that was the last um, American pilot to shoot down a a bogey like during war yeah, like, or the jet. I don't know. Because they talk about well, that. That we know they about. They talk about that in, top, in, in uh, top Gun Maverick. They're like, you know, um, Pete Mitchell was the last ever, you know, American pilot to shoot down a a, a a a bogey in a war scenario or whatever. And I wonder if right, yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, this is cool. So the Navy only authorized two actual missile shots to be filmed for the film. Uh, you can clearly pick out those two shots. Ultimately, shot from several angles, each in order to use both shots repeatedly during the mm -hmm. dogfighting scenes, uh, because the aircraft firing the missile is holding a steady altitude and heading, something that would never happen in a real 
uh, dogfight. Yeah. Uh, all other missile shots shown in the film were conducted using miniatures of both the planes and rockets. The company that produced and fired the models, um, uh, model missiles, did such a good job that the Department of the Navy conducted a preliminary investigation into whether any additional live firing of missiles beyond the two originally authorized were done for the filmmakers. <laughs> wow. So they had to, like, they were like, did you actually do more? Yeah. They were like, what? You fired more than the two. <laughs> no, wow. We didn't. It's all, it's all miniatures. Um, uh, what else we got? So this one's cool. Um, uh, the elevator scene, um, in which Maverick and Charlie meet after his workout, yeah, uh, was filmed post production. Oh. Uh, Kira McGillis's hair had already been colored for another movie role, which is why she's wearing a hat. Tom Cruise's hair is longer in the shot as well. Weird, so, that... yeah, because she's like in a really weird, like, like baseball cap, like, she looks nothing like what she looks like for the entire rest of the film. Right. In yeah, that scene. it's weird because that scene, for some reason, it stood out to me when I watched it again, and I didn't know yeah. why. Maybe That's it was why. just the fact that he, looked, that he was like, he looks like he's basically naked with a towel around him, stood in an <laughs> elevator in the middle of a, of a building. But and like yeah. the, the, the admiral walks in, doesn't he? And he's like, "Hello, I'm the admiral." Like, oh. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Oh, and this is a is a cool one. The ship that Viper served on with Maverick's father, the USS Oris, Sang- Oris County, uh, was the first. This is like the real one. Um, was the first United States warship stated uh, slated to become an artificial reef uh, under oh. authority granted by the fiscal two thousand and four National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, it was sunk with controlled charges twenty four miles south of P- uh, Pensacola on seventeenth hmm. of May two thousand and six. It's now popularly popularly known as the Great Carrier Reef. The Great the Carrier Reef. Reef. Genius. Yeah. How cool is that? That'd be cool. It'd be cool so, to yeah. dive that, wouldn't it? So that's the one that they yeah, they actually served on. And the, yeah, it's now uh, a reef. Wow. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Very cool. And yeah, there's loads more trivia on this film, but I'm, uh, that's that's enough for now. That's enough. What would you say? <laughs> what would you say are your favorite lines from this movie? Things that have stuck with you? <laughs> uh wow. Well, there's two that I really laughed out loud at, I think, watching this. First one is um, by uh, <laughs> Stinger, who is, um, he's like the the aircraft carrier captain, isn't he, or admiral or whatever yeah. rank he would be, uh, played by the guy who played Strickland, uh, Strickland in, yeah. Uh, yeah, in Back to the Future. Yeah, you're, a, um, you're a slacker, McFly. Your dad was a slacker. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and he he says at one point during this, like when he tells um, Maverick that he's going to be going to uh, to Top Gun, or yeah, it's when he's going to be going to Top Gun. He says, and if you screw up, <laughs> if you, if you screw up just this much, you'll be flying a cargo plane full of rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yes, sir. Rubber dog shit. <laughs> rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. Oh, Brilliant. Man. Um, and I think the other one that I absolutely loved is when they're in the bar and, um, Slider says, Goose, you're such a dickhead. Whose butt did you kiss to get in here anyway? And Goose goes, the list is long, but (laughs) the list is long, but distinguished. And Slider goes, yeah, well, so is my Johnson. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good line. Damn it. That's the one I picked out to be honest. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I knew that you would pick that one out. (laughs) <laughs> I knew you picked that one out. Um, but no, I mean, like, you know, there's so many. There is so many. Uh, I think, like, one of my one of my favorite is, there's actually a scene with that guy, the, the guy that plays Strickland in Back to the Future, and he's like, they're like, he's like, we got these bogeys, we've got to scramble these bogeys, blah, 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 blah. He's like, he's like okay, we've got, to, um, we've got to scramble some planes. He's like, how long is it going to take? He goes, 10 minutes, sir. He goes, bullshit, 10 minutes. This thing will be over in two minutes. Get after it. And it's just like one <laughs> yeah. of those, like, He's sitting in the radar room. His face is green from the radar screens, you know, and he's just yeah. sweat, just caked. In Everyone's sweat. sweating so in, in this film for the whole film. Constantly. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like Dwayne Johnson in all of the Fast and Furious movies, just <laughs> if, if every character was the same. Sweat. They must have had someone just walking around or off camera with like a little squeezy bottle of water. Without a ready doubt. Ready to run on just a... Psh, 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 Without a doubt. Sweat. Psh, psh, psh. I tell you what I will say about the end credits. Um, yeah. That is, you don't see these often, but it has a wonderful end credits role where all of the actors <laughs> are like looking back at the camera like and doing TV. it online. It's like fucking Quantum Leap all exactly, over again. Exactly, exactly like Quantum Leap. Yeah, um, 
one thing they used to do in the eighties that they don't really do much anymore. Thank um, God. I love it. I, the only other exception I can think of that was amazing in the eighties, I think it was the same year. Uh, oh no, it was a little. It was a year after Predator. They did the same thing at the end of Predator. Oh, they did do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dun, yeah. Dun. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Um, yeah, and you see, like, you know, Goose, hey, there he is. Oh, no, he's not dead. He's still alive. It's all right. Everything's going to be fine. You know, <laughs> it's like that. I love yeah. that. Looks at the camera, has a sip of coffee, you know, winks, you know, yeah. smokes a cigar, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Speaking of which, actually, um, mm. the 80s, so this was like the highest, this is, I guess, another bit of trivia, but it's something I remembered from what I was reading. So this was the highest grossing film in 2000, uh, action film in 2000, uh, in 86, sorry, not 2006, 1986. <laughs> this is the highest grossing action movie of 2006, by the way. Do you know what the next highest grossing film was after that? Um, 1986. In 1986? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me have a quick look at the movies from 1986. <laughs> Let me have a look from the movie the night. Hang on. I can't do it off the top of my head. Okay. I'm I could just, just tell you. A quick list. I'm going to do a quick list. All right. Yeah. Reel off some other films from 86. Go on. All right. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Brilliant Pink, Labyrinth. We already talked about that. Iron what Eagle. Year. What a year. Iron Eagle, which was like a ripoff of this. Um, yeah. It was a great year. Stallone, Cobra, Platoon, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, Color of Money. Oh, that was Tom Cruise as well. Short you're Circuit. Not, you're, Benjamin. You're not it so far. <laughs> um, <laughs> in Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, Three Amigos. Crocodile Dundee. Hello there. Bingo. Was it Crocodile Dundee? <laughs> it was Crocodile Dundee. Oh my god. <laughs> That's yeah. not a knife. <laughs> Call that a knife. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. What a year for film, 1986. Mate, was, imagine wow. going to the movie theater and watching Top Gun and then, ah, oh, that was good. Yeah. What else you got out with you? Oh, Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> go in there. What's that? I'll go watch that. Forward. What else you got? Cobra. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. What else you got? Flight yeah. of the Navigator. What well, else you got? Short Circuit. Ferris Bueller. Short Circuit. I mean, oh, man. the list goes on, but what a year. Oh, wow. The Karate Kid Part 3. Mm. Probably not the best one, but I still loved it. Also, this must have been around, because uh, Michael Ironside's in in um, Top Gun, mm-hmm. isn't he? He's like the um, the other guy that's higher up in Top Gun. Mm-hmm. I love Michael Ironside. Me too. People will know him a lot as the bad guy in um, Robocop. And one of the bad guys. Total like Recall. The man, and Total Recall. See you at the party, Richter! <laughs> and also as... Um, like the commander guy in Starship Troopers. Yep. And also well. Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell. Yes. The voice. Lambert. What a voice he's got. He's brilliant. Lambert. Um, yeah, sorry. I just thought I'd mention that. And I think that, that was funny because... Oh, dude, this has got flicking. a great 80s cast. Like Tom Skerritt is in there. Tom Cruise. Val Kilmer. Meg Ryan. Strickland. Meg Ryan. Um, Tim Robbins. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, Tim Robbins turns up at the end, doesn't he, on the carrier day? And he's like, oh, Tim Robbins was here no, all this time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it had a great cast. It's really good. Yeah. Top Gun. Bloody brilliant. Bloody top. It was top, top. Bloody gun, top. It? it was bloody top. top, of top the class. <laughs> Lovely. Really enjoyed it. Good one. It was definitely a great video store corner. Very vintage 80s and... Yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of Top Gun this week. I'm not going to lie, I need a little break, but then I'm probably going to go see the new one again. <laughs> do it. But I do feel like, I will just go back and say that, I feel like if you were of this time and you watched this movie the first time it came out or it's one of your favorite movies from that era, you're going to absolutely love the new movie. So do go check out Top Gun Maverick and um, you're welcome, basically, is all I'll say to that. <laughs> uh, all right, Phil, anything else from you? Nothing. Absolutely zilch. God for that. It's been a long one, isn't yeah. it? It's been a long isn't one. Isn't it? That's what she said. Um, okay. Well, I don't think I've got okay. anything else. I'm just, just going to sit here and in silence and reflect back on all of that homoeroticism and um, yeah. question my life there's choices. A, there's a lot of it this week. It's been great. I loved it. I love it. It's been great. Uh, so join us yeah. on the next Movie Mouth podcast slice of movie and TV related podcasts. Fun. But before then... Please, please follow our Facebook. 
or our Instagram accounts at Movie Mouth Podcast and hit that little subscribe button, please. Or, you know, give us a nice five star review on your podcast player of choice. Phil, my my little bottom gun, my little backseat <laughs> driver. Hello. 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 <laughs> There's just one last thing to say, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Go on, boy. Say it, boy. I'm going to say it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Woo.